Hello. <laughs> uh, I, I, I guess uh, we're going to say re- welcome back to Wrestling Life. On the road. I am literally driving the car, uh, driving the bus from the compound back up to uh, beautiful, dirty Jersey. I've been on, I've been on the road for longer than I care to uh, remember. It's been, uh, I think, like fucking 10 days for me. Uh, these guys, we picked them up. What, what, what day did we leave? I don't even know what day. What day is it today? Uh, it's Sunday, Sunday, right? Sunday the what? Yeah. Sunday the what? Yeah. You say so. Um, Mont- uh, we, by the way, we got a bus full of kids. Half of them are sleeping. I think we're somewhere still in Georgia. I think we're still- yeah, still in Georgia. We didn't leave yet. Yeah, so we're still in Georgia. Um, I think we're getting close to South Carolina here. Um, but we, first of all, I've been on the road and I haven't had a chance to do a podcast. So now is the best time to do it. I mean, why would you not just, you know, technology allows us to turn the cameras on ourselves at any point. Let's do it. Um, so Montezuma. This is your first experience at a wrestling camp. Um, how was that? Uh, what the fuck was that? <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? I'm yeah. like the, the Walking Dead right now. That was pretty pretty brutal. Three sessions. What we did was we did three sessions a day. We went uh, technique in the morning, strength training in the afternoon, and then live wrestling at night. And uh, I forget sometimes that most of these kids have done this stuff and you know even gone away to different places and kind of, um, you know, been to different camps and stuff like that. So for a guy like you, that's kind of green to the sport. Right. Yeah. Green to the sport. Throwing you into a meat grinder. Yeah. Something like that. I I forget sometimes that it takes some, some getting used to, I guess. How's your body feel, you know, overall, by the way, Monty's fighting. Looks like September 20th. We're, we're still nailing down an opponent, no pun intended. Um, but uh, we're still working on an opponent with Montezuma. We'll be fighting um, in Atlantic City for Ring of Combat September 20th. Um, we're going to do it live. We're going to do it live. But um, how's your body feeling? Uh, ravaged. Really? Yeah, yeah, your body's hurt. Real sore. Stiff, more stiff than anything. But that's just a muscle stiffness. Now, you know, I think the idea was to, to kind of jumpstart your training camp again. And, uh, that, that was a hell of a send-off. Yeah. It was, a, it was a good week. You know, Cliff and Lee uh, were, they, they, you know, as cordial like, uh, a host as you can have. Those guys were awesome. Um, especially considering that we broke shit while we were there. Yeah. I felt bad, dude. Um, we, we wound up, what was it, what, two nights ago? Or was it last night? Two nights ago. Two nights ago, we were we had a live session and everyone was just kind of feeling it, man. We had the, you know, we, Monty was uh, was in full on Montemania mode. Um, you know, we had uh, we had a good amount of energy in the room. It was a lot of energy. And, and guys were just feeling it and uh, we cranked the music up so loud. Um, and one of the speakers fell fell off the shelf and hit the. 50 inch LCD screen and crack the shit out of that. I blame Rage Against the Machine. I blame, yeah, I blame. It wasn't us. It was I blame them. Zach. Zach Del Roach's fault. Son of a bitch. So we had to replace a 50 inch TV. How about these 50 inch biceps on camera? <laughs> <laughs> Can you even get them all in the shot? I don't know. It's so big. <laughs> From all those pull ups I did. Um, so yeah, we. <laughs> They, but but you know, typical club. He's like, hey man, you broke shit. <laughs> My bad. I'm sorry. I didn't realize. It. I felt really bad. You know. So we went out and replaced it. Uh, blah, 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 blah. What else? Uh, Lee Roper put uh, schooled us up on some uh, some pretty amazing technique. Uh, one of the days. Yeah, he uh, went over some shit that I never even seen. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it was great, man. So, all in all, I think it was a real good experience. Uh, it always is, though. You know, when we come down here, we do these camps. We've been coming down 
Um, and I mean, that we had a good group of guys. Yeah. Everyone became wanted to work hard. No one, no one really bitched. Everyone kept pushed through. There was no nonsense. Yeah. There, there was the. You know, I mean, for the most part, there was no bitching. You know. Uh, but, uh, oh, lost my camera. Oh, good. This isn't as easy as we make it look, fellas. All right, we just make it look good. Yeah. So, but I mean, we the the the, the pissing and moaning was held to a minimum. You know, uh, the I think the overall experience was important. You know, for for me, getting these kids number one away from their away from their. Uh, their, their own beds, getting them away from their girlfriends, getting them away from their Xbox, getting them away from, you know, just the, you know, the grind of every day is, is important to me, you know, like once a, once a year, I think you need to go do a training camp, and, and, you know, as you, as you get older, like me, um, you probably can't do a full-on training camp, but, like, I, for me, I like to get away from everything and go up in the woods and, you know, spend, ahead. you know, yeah, for sure, spend a week, you know, fishing out, you know, bumfuck Pennsylvania, uh, but, but I think one of these, these kids need a reset button and need to kind of refocus their goals and, and not to mention they need to live like a professional athlete, like understand, you know, hey, look, some of these kids want to do this for the rest of their life and and, and by showing them the, the groundwork or the foundation of what a pro athlete will go through on a daily basis, you know, and how you have to live in order to become a, a pro athlete, that's important you know, these kids you know, some, some people, like I don't think you knew what that meant before, you know you, you started training with you know, I think, I think, you know, you you said it best. You know, actually, Keith, you and Keith, one of the other fighters that trains at the gym, um, said, "All right, well, you know, our conditioning used to be roll jujitsu for you know X amount of time and then hit pants for three rounds." You know, yeah, there was no no the, other yeah strength and conditioning none right. of that. So, I think you know whether these kids, any of them, go into um, international style wrestling whether they they want to wrestle at a division one level because that's let's be honest that's that's a professional athlete okay these guys you know don't kid yourself just because you're not allowed to get a paycheck doesn't mean that you're not a professional athlete these kids at a division one level are absolutely 100 percent professional athletes so they're probably more professional than, than professional athletes a lot of them yeah with, um, they, with what they have to dedicate and do yeah i, I mean you know i can't i, mean, I don't know I can't imagine that a pro baseball player is putting. The, I'm just saying, like I mean, you know, a pro baseball player is not putting in the time that an NCAA wrestler. Is. I don't. I don't know. I, I could be wrong. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't think so. Like, I, I mean, because does that much really go into it, though. I mean, here, here we go. Ready? No, there's. I mean, there's probably more to it than that. I mean, yeah, well, I mean, there obviously is more to it than that. But even physically, I don't know. No, probably not. They're definitely, not. probably not. not breaking themselves down like that. You know, like like for me, like one of the, the, the stories that that rings in my head is uh, you know who John Cruck is. John Cruck played for the Philadelphia Phillies, and he was always like what the Phillies in the '90s were were like. A bunch of mullet wearing, like big cheap tobacco spit, booze hound. You know, Lenny Dykstra was just. You know, these guys were. They they were. Half rock star, half. You know, redneck half. Or that's a lot of halves. I understand. So you don't fucking. Look, I've been on the road for ten days. Go fuck yourself. Half this, half uh, yeah. That. But you know what I mean. Like they were. They were. Professional athletes, but they, you know, they, I don't know how. So, but John Crook was like, you know, 260 playing first base. And he, he had a great bat, you know, but he had a hard time getting to first base, that's for sure. But um, one of the stories that 
rings in my head was he did an interview. I forget where it was, but um, he was in an airport and shows you how long ago it was. So he was smoking a cigarette in the airport as he was walking, you know. And uh, some lady came up to him and said, aren't you a professional athlete? You should be ashamed of yourself. Smoking cigarettes, setting a bad example for these kids that are walking through this airport. Shame on you. He goes, lady, I'm a professional athlete. I'm a ball player. <laughs> he just walked away. The original Kenny Powers. That was it. I mean, wow. know, yeah. So, I mean, Kenny Powers is probably based loosely on John Krug or the, the Phillies. Wow. Um, I'm trying to be the best at working out. I'm an athlete. It's true, though. You know, and that's, what do you think about those? Okay, so you, you, you brought up a point. What do you think about the best of the, the CrossFit community, right? Like, they have the CrossFit games now. So, yeah. basically, that's, that is what Kenny Powers was making fun of, you know? Or, I guess, I don't even know the guy's real name. What's the guy's real name? Uh, Danny McBride? Yeah, I think he, he wrote, he's one of the writers on that show, too, isn't he? I think so. Yeah, I think he writes that stuff, too. Because... Yeah, he, that dude's pretty brilliant. He's, uh, but anyway, um, that's what he's making fun of. These guys are trying to be the best at exercise. <laughs> that's what they're doing. They're trying to be the best at exercise. Like, I'm not, I exercise. A lot. A for whole what? lot. For what? For the exercise. Right. So, I mean, <laughs> that's what they're doing, though. They're, oh, being, man, they're trying to be the fucking best at exercise. I didn't think of it like that. Uh, and I'm not hating. I'm not hating. Because I can't do that stuff. Like I see chick. Ooh, hello, holy macro. Uh, I see chicks on there, overhead squat, two twenty five. Like and repping it. Like them chicks are bad, dude. So, um, I mean, I'm not hating. You know, it just seems to me that I think it's just a trend now. It is and a trend. It is absolutely a trend. We'll see what the next one is. Um, well. Make Zumba. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that's what I hear. <laughs> oh, no, he didn't. We'll get there. All right. I th- look, man, I can tell you about it, but I'd have to kill you. Um, uh, fuck, you just completely fucked me up there. We're, we're, we're CrossFit heroes. Right. And they're trend. Uh, well, it just seems to me like, like okay, I don't understand that. Like, I don't understand running either. I really don't. I don't Unless like I'm running from something. Yeah, I don't know. or for something. For something, yeah. yeah. Like, I just... Running was something that we did to get in shape for something else. To me. I mean, I don't... I'm not... Again, I'm not hating on marathon runners or ultra... Like... But what's I'm not. Purpose? I'm not terribly impressed until you start running 50 miles in a clip. I'm just not... Like, I mean... Because now it's not a physical thing anymore. That's it's, an old mental. Oh yeah, now it's a complete. Now it's a mental game. Yeah, so, how the fuck do you get your mind to that though? I'm still how? running 50 miles today. Um, there's there's some bad ass people out there that we don't know anything about, and they they don't care to have us know about them either. Like there's some really really. I think I brought him up on the podcast before. Uh, excuse me. But uh, his name is Joe Decker. This is one of the most unassuming badasses that I've ever been around. You know, I did that death race and I just got to kind of, I got to kind of be around the guy and, and just, like just from a distance. I've mean, seen what he's all about. Yeah, but. dude. And, and I, I did have a dialogue with him afterwards, but man, man, it, it, like this guy, uh, grab your phone. Pull up the fittest man. Actually, Paul, you do it. Pull up the Joe Decker, the fittest man in the world, and what he had to do to to get that title. This guy, you know, is in the Guinness Book of World Records as being the fittest man in the world. What? Like? Exactly. Uh, well, it, it was. Uh, we're waiting on uh, Paul, but it was somewhere along the lines of in a 24 hour period you had to run 20 miles you know 1000 push ups whatever squats lift to a quarter million pounds um, um, a quarter million pounds hold on yeah one day 
December to achieve it. He Speak bike, louder. He bicycled 100 miles. Bike 100. Ran 10. Ran 10. Hiked 10. Hiked 10. He power walked 5 miles. Power walked 5. Kayak 6. Kayak 6 miles? I can't do that right now. Go ahead. Sorry, keep going. He skied on a Nordic track for 10 miles. Skied on a Nordic track for 10 miles. Rode for 10 miles. Rode for 10 miles. Swam for two. Swam two miles. He did 3,000 abdominal crunches. 3,000 crunches. 1,100 jumping jacks. 1,100 jumping jacks. 1,000 leg lifts. 1,000 leg lifts. 1,100 push-ups. 1,100 push-ups. And he weightlifted commutatively. Cumulatively. Yeah, that word. Commutatively? Yeah. <laughs> Say with your chest. <laughs> 278 and 540 pounds. Like 0.54 Okay, the 100 and central uh, education system is not great. So, that's I'm church right there. This, <laughs> How, what, what, how much how weight? Long. How much weight did he lose in English? Oh my! God. He weight lifted. He lifted two hundred seventy-eight point five four zero pounds. No. Yes. That's what it says. He lifted only two hundred seventy pounds. Oh. Yeah. Two hundred seventy-eight point five four zero pounds. Two hundred seventy-eight thousand. That is not no, what you said. I said that. No, it's not. You're a dummy. You ruined my podcast. <laughs> Jeez. This is why we can't have nice this things. Is this is why we can't have nice things. So there are dudes out there that I'm willing to bet. Well, that I mean, t- that's that's what he had to do to be the. Well, I'd be impressed if that wasn't my warm up. So, <laughs> <laughs> so who the fuck is he? Uh, no, nah, look, man. The, the, there are people out there that that, that is fucking insane, though. That cool. was all in a 24 hour. Yes, in 24 hours. That is. Come on. That's fucking crazy. I'll do it 12. No, I actually, uh, I contacted Guinness Book about China to beat the record. I was yeah. going to do it, yeah, I was going to do it in 23 and a half hours. And they just laugh and hang up? No, they they said that they're actually getting rid of the record. Why? Because the, the, well, no, the reps were really hard to, to, like some people were pissing and moaning that he wasn't going all the way down on his push-ups. You see what I mean? Like, like it's just fucking haters out there, you know. So, like, so because it wasn't like it's so, it's hard to measure, you know, each specific. Like, okay, what's the criteria on each push-up? What's the this? What's the that? Um, I think that they said, you know, yeah. But I was gonna do it last May. I was I was training to to do that last May. Um, but yeah, they, Guinness got back to me and said, no, no go. Yeah. I mean, we could do it as a goof. <laughs> the fuck of it? I mean, uh, we don't know world records. Pretty sure, yeah. There we go. If anybody out there is willing to do that in 23 and a half hours, um, I will pay for you to, and I'm not fucking kidding, I will pay for you to come out to the gym and do it at the club. And we like, you know, we'll do a lot. We'll do a lot. Are you going to be in a Nordic track to ski? Craigslist. 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 How about that guy? Fuck you. Why you, you gotta put holes in my fucking my You know what, Paul? <laughs> Sit down, shut up, close your eyes. Yeah. Sorry about Take your bushy hair and fucking go to sleep. Um, Women fucking Bieber back here. Uh, oh but, you know, I think guys like me, you know, are, is, you know I'm clearly past sport of wrestling, like meaning the sport has passed me by, um, you know, decades ago. My body just will not allow me to compete in wrestling anymore. I can't do what it takes to compete in wrestling. Um, something like that gives a guy like me, I don't know if it's direction, purpose, or whatever. Just something to be competitive? Yeah. Active. I mean, like, like I was talking to Shooter about it quite a bit this trip and he goes you know I just I don't feel right about the training right now I said it's because you don't have a goal you know you, you don't have a purpose you don't have a, a something to shoot for we're you know we are we as wrestlers and as fighters are very 
goal-oriented oriented and, and task-oriented. You got to have something to look forward to. A date. Yeah. You know, now that you have a fucking date, you're, you're, you can tell. It's a, it's a, di- instead of coming into the gym and go through the motions. Right. And you, ne- there's no part of you that ever kind of throws it in neutral. Okay. Let's be honest. Right. Well, I, I, training's always a fucking training camp. Right. You gotta, you gotta but, but there's a certain amount of intensity that you walk around with when you have a date in mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there, there is a certain, so. But so if you know there's someone right now that's training to annihilate you in front of your friends and family, if you don't get motivated for that, you're fucking retarded. Yeah, but let's take it because this this podcast was meant for coaches. This podcast wasn't meant for kids. Um, you know, because to me, there's a there's a big community of of people out there that that don't necessarily uh, coach wrestling anymore or, or maybe maybe they do but they're you know they're not engulfed in the culture as much as they used to be and they they need a, a, a direction to you know they need a fucking something to train for you know like I, I have a lot of friends a ton of friends that they go to me well how did you know I got, I, you know, they're fat now. You know, they're they're in their thirties. They're 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 thirty five and they're fat. They, you know, they wrestled at one. I have a, I have a friend of mine, good friend of mine. He's been on the podcast before. Who his senior year in high school wrestled one thirty five. One full year later, he was he was fifty pounds heavier. One full year after that, later he was a hundred pounds heavier. 235. How does that happen? You just, you, you don't have a goal anymore. You don't have a goal anymore. And that's what happens. You know, so a guy like that comes to me and goes, I need to get weight off. What do I have to do? I go, you need to go, you need to go back to wrestling. You need to, you need to find the sport again. You need to find, uh, uh, fall, fall in love with how, the sport again. You know? We were, we were talking about the switch before. How do you go from being on and motivated and you're exhausted you know, really? these kids are exhausted just shut it down these kids are just exhausted give it up. yeah dude I mean you walk away that long and gain over 100 pounds and say oh yeah Fuck it's it. easy to do it's easy to do I could do it shit I did do it I, I just told you I, I, I was the heaviest I have ever been uh, one exactly one week from one week ago heaviest I've ever been in my life was one week ago okay now that was done on purpose, okay? Details to come soon. Um, but that was done for real, though. It was done on purpose. I gained a lot of weight, but that's the heaviest I ever been. You know, so it's easy to do. Putting on weight's fucking easy, man. You know, but these what what people don't understand is that, especially because of wrestling and what it teaches you, we live such an extreme. Lifestyle, I guess. It's either you're all in or you're all out. Yeah, either you are, you know, full on back in wrestling season mode, or you are, you know, you're you're in off season mode. You know. So what what I think we need to to do is create a culture of not just wrestling, but of of fitness and of training. You know, the the wrestling's easy. I mean, if you can if you can allow yourself to wrestle or compete within 10 pounds of your natural weight but just train at a real high level all year round you know 11 months out of the year I think that's the way to go pretty much what we're doing now right I mean again you know like we're not just we're not just preaching this shit we're practicing it too that's what we've been doing right that's just how it is so you know we're, we're, what we're gonna do I think is is train older people, meaning people that are not in high school, not going into wrestling season, the same way that we train our athletes. 
Because why should why should someone like Mr. Lombard, who is one of the greatest people I know, why should he be unhealthy and out of shape when he can just as easily become part of this culture and, and experience it with his kids at the same time? I want ever like... You know, Dan Gable said, you know, every, you know, once you've wrestled, everything else in your life is easy, right? Well, why can't we, why can't we have that experience? Because it's not just wrestling that that does that. It's the experience of a wrestling season, which, you know, is is a crime. You know, and, and let alone just a wrestling room. Right. A re- get, walking into a wrestling room and, and being intimidated and, you know, not knowing. Whether some like what like so it, it it's not just wrestling. So do I want guys like you know Mr. Lombard who really never wrestled to to you know, strap up a pair of kales and come out and scrap with us? No, of course not. But he can get you know seventy five percent of the of the positive effects of wrestling season out of a fitness regimen that we've created. You know, a guy like that can get the same effects as, you know, these kids get. And we, we, we talk about this on the podcast all the time. We talk about, uh, you know, this one would be nothing without wrestling. And this one, you know, fought through adversity because of wrestling. And this one, you know, uh, is a leader in business because of wrestling. And this one, you know, understands how important it is for his kids to wrestle. And, well, we can, we can duplicate that. We can, we can... We can take this this sport and what it offers and the, the benefits of it and give it to the general public and just put it in a different you know, in a different light. You know, we don't have to wrestle all the time. You know, I mean some of these you know, some of these moms and dads that are talking to me about training them, they're not gonna get out there and, and you know, do a training for live night. Yeah, they're not going they're they're not strapping up for live night for sure. You know, so I think if we can kind of market this the right way, it, it it's going to be interesting. It's going to be we're, we're going to we're, we're going to change. I, I want, I don't, all I want to do is just change the world. Nothing. I mean, nothing crazy. I, mean, I do. I want to change the world. You know, I, if one one head snap at a time. Maybe more of like a little family oriented yeah, thing. Yeah. Yeah. Bring it back. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we lost Mr. Duffy here. You guys see him up there? Yeah. You? Yeah. Alright. Yeah, I see him up there. Alright, good. Um, but yeah, that's the idea, man. That's the idea, anyway. Um, I can take it. Yeah. You know. What else? Anything else from the compound you want to go into? Um. Yeah, there's some good stuff. If you're not following Monty on Instagram, first of all, shame on you, okay? Because it's good old school. All right, first of all, this is a very real part of a fucking road trip. Who the fuck? Hey, who farted? That is awful. Who fucking farted? That, you guys are gross. That's, <laughs> that wasn't even me. Oh, my God. It smells like beef and cheese. That's terrible, dude. It smells like farting. Yeah. It's, 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 this this van has been here. Let, let's just show what the awful. hell we're dealing with. Pretty awful. Meat wagon, meat wagon. There's a lot of meat on this one. Yeah. So, uh, anything else from the pond? They were part of the compound. Embrace the dirt. Embrace the dirt. All right, fellas. Um, what else? I think that's about it, man. Yeah. yeah. We'll get this up tomorrow. Hopefully. See you. Do it live.